Hello everyone. So unless and until you've been living under a rock, you would have definitely heard the term called Bitcoin, um, cryptocurrency. And you know these are terms that we keep hearing nowadays uh, more often than before. And I'm going to explain in this video uh, in the most simplest of terms, you know, what is Bitcoin? What is digital currency or cryptocurrency? And some of the history behind it and also, you know, technically what it actually means. Uh, what is blockchain that is the, that is the, that is the system behind the, the cryptocurrency so i'll try and explain it in the most simplest of terms so that you will understand it by the end of this video so before we even go into the uh, details of what uh, bitcoin is you know why is the need for a cryptocurrency why do we need a digital currency in the first place like you know we have indian rupees us dollars and we store our money in the bank so it's all safe so why do we need to go for it a few months back, uh, one of the major Indian banks, Punjab National Banks, had a big collapse and uh, people who had put their money in the bank, they were not able to withdraw their money. They were not even able to use their money. The cards were not valid. The money was there in the bank electronically or you know, it was on paper at least to showing the money was there in the bank, but the bank had collapsed. So they were struggling to get their money out. And um, in countries like India, the government actually uh, backs up some of the money in the bank up to about 1 lakh rupees. And, in some countries like uh, UK, for example, the governments back up the money till about 85,000 pounds. So like if the bank collapses, the bank, the government will provide up to 85,000 pounds in some countries like UK, but in, in every country it differs. But there's no guarantee if you had like a, a one crore deposit in a bank and the bank collapses, the money is gone. You know, literally, even if it's on paper, you can't go and get it from anywhere. And in some cases, the country itself collapses. Like for example, when Iraq invaded Kuwait, the Kuwait in dinar basically lost its value. So people who had thousands and thousands of Kuwait in dinars, that was basically paper and it had no value anymore, which is where the concept of um, um, you know, having a digital currency comes into place, where there is no physical bank, there is no physical entity that stores it, and there is no government that, that needs to exist to recognize it, which is what the whole concept of digital currency is. The origin of Bitcoin um, or the technology behind Bitcoin is a concept called as blockchain. Now, the blockchain concept wasn't new. It was something that had existed for nearly 20 years. And um, till about 2009, there was no real usage for it. Now, what is blockchain? Now, basically, uh, when we put our money in a bank, right, you know, the, the data is existing in one computer. It's in a server or it's in a data storage room. You, know, you would have seen it in big movies where there is a computer room and hackers basically hack into the computer. They can get the money out using, um, you know, brute force algorithm or whatever hacking method they use. But there is basically one computer or basically two or three computers that they hack into and the data is sitting in one place and they hack into it and they can change the data and once you change the data the money is gone like that's how you would have seen it in all the movies and that's how the data storage used to exist before the concept of blockchain what does blockchain actually mean let's take a simple example right let's assume that there is a rich uh, person and this rich person has one bookkeeper now there is the bookkeeper is basically making sure uh, how much money this person is having there's in and outs that's he's writing it in a book and that book is with him so if you want to make sure that uh, you take the money out from the rich man or you change the money that the rich man has if you can just go to the bookkeeper and 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 modify that notebook that he is maintaining then you can basically say that instead of one crore he has only 50 lakhs if you can modify that notebook that the rich that the bookkeeper is maintaining also if you convince the bookkeeper that he needs to change it he can change it or you can go and steal the notebook and change it basically there's one source of data which you can go and change now this is the traditional database that i talked about one machine concept that i talked about right now if the rich man um, anticipates that this could happen and instead of one bookkeeper in one book he basically pays 10 bookkeepers and asks everyone to maintain his accounts on a daily basis in parallel, right? So 10 bookkeepers individually each have their own notebooks and they're all writing the same accounts. So even if you manage to get hold of one bookkeeper and change the one note, um, one notebook and the data in the one notebook, the other nine um, bookkeepers are going to have the data. So you can, you have actually not changed anything. So if you really want to change the, you know, 10,000 rupees to 20,000 rupees or change any data, you have to basically go to all the 10 bookkeepers and simultaneously you have to change the data in all of the 10 notebooks. And imagine if the uh, rich man knew that this could also happen. And instead of 10 bookkeepers, he now has 100 bookkeepers and each of them have their own notebook. And if these 100 uh, bookkeepers are basically um, not in one location, they're spread across all across the country, or maybe all across the world for that matter. 
and uh, which means that it's technically impossible to to access all of these 100 bookkeepers change all of their notebooks change all of the data in all of those notebooks only then you will be able to steal money or change the data that belongs to that rich man now this is the concept of blockchain this is exactly the concept of blockchain that the data is decentralized and the data is stored in multiple copies so instead of one database instead of one computer or one server having the data the blockchain concept basically ensures that the data is is decentralized and it's not sitting in one place so every transaction is happening in multiple entries across the world and the other thing is because it's uh, decentralized to that extent you don't even know where the 100 bookkeepers are sitting or you don't even know the number of bookkeepers are sitting all you know is that there are multiple bookkeepers and each of them keeping their own individual note of every transaction that happens which means if somebody is to hack into the blockchain and change the data they will have to first find out how many computers or how many uh, copies of this data are there and they will have to find a way to simultaneously in parallel change all of the data across all of the blockchain which is technically impossible add to the complexity uh, you're basically saying that to every bookkeeper that uh, before you write anything on the on the notebook before you actually edit anything or um, put an entry into the notebook you will have to tell me what is uh, 1024 into 2715 some complex um, arithmetic that they need to solve manually before they are able to enter in which means that it takes time for them to do it before they can even touch the pen and paper so there is a, a complexity that is built in before you even actually go and edit it in even one notebook so this is additional complexity added which means that if hacker wants to um, hack into a blockchain they've technically made it near impossible with the current infrastructure and the current technology that's what blockchain offers that you're not able to hack into the data you're not able to modify the data and the data is so secure and it's decentralized that it is not controlled by one person it is not controlled by one entity it is not controlled by any government for that matter so this concept existed on paper and uh, in 2008 um, someone called satoshi nakamoto um, this nobody knows whether this is one person or a group or you know who the exact identity of this satoshi nakamoto is but they wrote a white paper basically a, a detailed uh, description of how to implement this in a protocol for a peer to peer cash service or peer to peer digital currency which is what the 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 whole concept of bitcoin was and this 2008 white paper was widely received a lot of people uh, read it they understood it and in 2009 they implemented into the first cryptocurrency of the world which is bitcoin and that's how bitcoin was formed basically bitcoin was a decentralized blockchain based cryptocurrency which had no value it was just a theory at that point of time in 2009 and literally it was like less than 1 rupee when it was created and there were a few computers across the world god knows if it was 100 computers or 1000 computers when it was originally started all of them were processing bitcoin transactions simultaneously all of them were storing the data in their blockchains individually they were all having a consensus algorithm between them and um, the value was was not there you know bitcoin was just created as a concept and nobody understood what it was to be used for and slowly they were trying to create a value for this now um, how do you create a value for a currency now this goes back in time right so when uh, when we didn't have currency you know what did we used to do we used to have a barter system like if i made bread and somebody else made milk i go and give them bread and they give me milk and we just basically exchange So this is how all the um, world transactions were happening you know we were exchanging goods for another goods like you know people exchange clothes for food people exchange um, you know ornaments and so on so so like they they started from essentials and they basically extended it to um, non essentials as well from a bartender system and eventually kingdoms were formed and kings basically said that okay you know instead of bartending i'm going to create something called as a coin it could be a gold coin silver coin whatever it is i'm going to create something called as a coin and everybody needs to start buying um using these coins and we will be the only people who will be issuing these coins the kingdoms wanted to control the barter system and how that's how this this whole concept uh, was created so exactly in the same way um people tried to create value for bitchain they they went around and started uh, asking merchants to um offer or accept bitcoins and offer goods or services whatever it is and that's how the the value was created the most notable transaction in history 
was basically uh, two pizzas. Uh, there was a, a pizza chain called uh, uh, Papa John's. And two pizzas were sold for apparently 10,000 Bitcoins at that point of time. This is basically a, an urban story. And um, the value of these 10,000 Bitcoins, you'll be surprised. One Bitcoin in 2017 was nearly $20,000 which means that in Indian rupees, we're talking about nearly 1,400 crores um, of, of money for just two pieces. Imagine 1,400 crores today. You can buy every pizza in every pizza um, shop in, a, in an entire state in India. And that's how much money that was basically spent, 10,000 Bitcoins for just buying two pizzas. And that was the first notable transaction where somebody said, okay, I'll accept Bitcoins. I don't know what it is, but I'll accept it. I'll give you these two pieces. And slowly but, um, you know, surely the value of the Bitcoin started growing. You know? These are some of the notable price points of Bitcoin. In about two years, it reached about $10. And uh, it took another couple of years before it reached $100. And when it reached $100 in 2013 was an important year because it jumped to $1,000 in the same year by the end of that year. And it kind of stayed in that uh, $1,000 to $100 range um, for about four years. 2017 was probably the most critical year for Bitcoin when it actually exploded. It started the year with about $1,000 and by the time it reached its peak value in 2017, it was nearly about $20,000 and uh, that was the highest point that it reached um, in terms of value uh, in 2017. So in 2009, if you had bought Bitcoins for even 10 rupees, 10 Bitcoins, you are probably looking at about one and a half crores of Indian rupees right now, which is staggering amount of money that you can think of. And nothing else has grown as much as Bitcoin has grown in the last 10 years, I would say. Now, um, Bitcoin was actually free at that point of time. You know, even now it is free uh, for mining. So what is mining? Mining is basically, you know, we talked about the decentralized computing, right? Decentralized processing. So individually, anyone with a computer, with a decent computer in 2009, can basically uh, run the Bitcoin node on their computer, which then stores and processes these blockchain transactions. Their computer is actually processing this blockchain. It's storing this blockchain. And in 2009, any decent computer could have actually been a Bitcoin um, processing computer, and you would be earning free Bitcoin for the effort that you're putting in of adding your computer to that, um, to that Bitcoin mine. And uh, you are, because you are using your computer, you're lending your computer for this processing, you get free Bitcoin as a reward for it, which is called as Bitcoin mining. Today, that process has become so complex that um, the computers are expected to solve uh, mathematically complex computation problems that normal computers that we have in our houses, normal laptops and normal desktops that we have in our houses, no longer able to solve these problems. You know, they are so complicated that there are specifically uh, computers that are made for Bitcoin mining. Um, in fact, they use the GPU more than the CPU and you need really power intensive computers. The power that the electricity that these computers need for doing Bitcoin mining is enormous that it is no longer profitable to have a computer in the house and do Bitcoin mining and uh, be profitable with Bitcoin mining. You, I mean, now companies actually make this as a business. They have thousands and thousands of GPU computers run in specific units where they're super cooled and uh, they, are, they have their own electric um, um, supply, uh, which is the cheapest in probably that place. And so they, they made it as a business to do Bitcoin mining right now. So Bitcoin is, is mining a Bitcoin with a home computer is virtually impossible right now. So like share trading, can you trade on cryptocurrencies? Yes, you can, but it's really complex. And there are over 10,000 different cryptocurrencies today. And uh, coins are now created for specific purposes, not just the monetary values. Like for example, Ethereum and XRP are number two and number three. XRP is created for uh, cross-border transactions to send money from one country to another or one currency to another. I'll explain it in my next video. And blockchain these days are not just used for cryptocurrency, so it's not interchangeably used blockchain and cryptocurrency. So we'll look at all of this in the next video.